And so my background is a lawyer, so I cannot make any presentation without making some references to, uh, to the law. So uh, the first slide that you have on screen uh, recalls what are the principles in the anti-dumping uh, basic regulation in the EU. In fact, why uh, today's subject is so important in terms of legal principles? Because there is a fundamental uh, issue linked to whether or not a country can be considered as a market economy. And the principle is there on screen, Article 27 of the Basic Anti-Dumping Regulation, which says that for those countries which cannot be regarded as market economy countries, in the dumping margin calculation, the normal value is never the domestic prices in that country. And this is, I will not read the provision, but this is uh, really an important um, uh, concept that you have to keep in mind. Now, what is really dumping? Because I have heard, you know, I've been dumping for more than 25 years and I have heard many definitions and most of them are wrong. Because for instance, what people say commonly, well, dumping is selling at a loss. No, that's not the definition of dumping. Dumping is the difference between two prices, the price on the domestic market for market economy countries and the price at which the same product is sold to the EU. So it's really that difference between the domestic price and the export price to the EU, which is the dumping margin. And so I have given an example on screen, very straightforward, so that we, have, we keep it very simple. So let's imagine that the normal value, so the domestic price is 100. The import price exports, because that's the rule, the import price exports is 80, but the CIF import price is 90. Why? Because there is transport costs and insurance costs which are added to the export price. The dumping margin in absolute value <coughs> is the difference between 100 and 80 which means 20, but the percentage, when you read the regulations, say, well, the dumping margin is 20%. It's in fact 20 divided by the CIF value, in this case, 22%. When a case is opened against China, China not being yet a market economy country, just keep in mind that the normal value will not be the, the prices in China. It will be the prices and costs of a market economy country comparable. That's, that's the concept, the analog market. Now let's move to the WTO and um, Mark uh, referred to that. China became WTO member in 2001. And so there was, everybody knows that, that there was a transitional period which will end up in December 2016. And there is a huge debate already about whether or not at the end of this trans transitional period, China will be considered or will be granted market economy status. And as you all know, in fact, becoming a WTO member or being granted market economy status, these are two different issues and we have two very good and straightforward examples of that. China, which became the WTO member, but, but which as of today is not granted yet market economy status. But the other example, the other way around, is uh, Russia. Russia got market economy status, but joined the WTO, uh, I think, last year. So the, the big issue today is whether or not in 2016, after uh, the, the transitional period, China will automatically be granted market economy status. And so there is a huge debate, and you know when the lawyers start to dispute, this is an, an endless story, so, <laughs> so we, we have already started, but it's not the end of it at all. And so the question is, 
really what you have on screen is there an automatic recognition in the uh, Chinese, China's uh, uh, accession protocol or could WTO members still consider whether or not after 2016 this uh, market economy stages can be granted? I will not make it too technical because it's not uh, today's purpose. But in fact, uh, the crucial part of the discussion is in Article 15D uh, of the Accession Protocol, which says that China must show that he has uh, market economy status either for the whole economy or for subsectors of the economy. And so when you look at these sentences, in fact, the, the mere asser assertion that China still has to show that the conditions are met have led some lawyers, but of course lawyers are divided, but some lawyers to say, well, there is no automatic recognition whatsoever. There is still a burden of proof on China. So what will happen in the EU? Impossible to, to say as of today, but let's imagine that exporting producers in China are not able to show that indeed market economy conditions are fulfilled. Then the investigating authority, and you know that in Europe it's the commission, is not obliged to use domestic Chinese prices and costs. This is what some lawyers say today. But honestly, I'm not in a position today to say that this, this is what will happen because the debate has just started. Just what I wanted to share with you is the very basic reasons why, in fact, this automaticity is not so clear cut because of Article 15D in the Chinese uh, Accession Protocol. Now, what do we do in the EU? As uh, Mark already uh, mentioned, there are criteria. criteria. These criteria were already mentioned by Mark. They are again on screen. I will not go through them again. But just recall that these criteria are 100% technical, or maybe I should say they should remain 100% technical. And this is what the Commission says. These are technical issues and we are considering them only from a technical point of view. By the way, there is a committee of experts whose mission is to go through the analysis of, of, of those criteria. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the last report was issued in 2008. And in fact, this report was not very promising. As uh, Mark said, there was just only one criteria which was fulfilled. Now, what happens <coughs> as of today? So there is no market economy status given to China, but the anti-dumping regulation provides for the possibility to individual companies to be granted market economy Treatment. So this is on an individual basis, company by company. And now I change my hat and I put my Eurabiage hat. We have had many, many anti-dumping cases in federal laws. And I wanted to share with you some examples so that you realize what could be the practical impact of giving market economy treatment. Of course, Treat market economy treatment and market economy status is not the same thing. But let's see, the approach, globally speaking, is the same. The difference is, is that status, market economy status, is what uh, considers the country as a whole, while market economy treatment considers the situation of a company uh, basis. <laughs> so let's, let's go back to uh, my cases which I took as examples, ferromolybdenum, China. So there were, in fact, two Chinese, uh, two, 10 Chinese companies which had uh, asked uh, the, um, the, granting of, uh, the granting of market economy uh, treatment. And in fact, 
only one company at the, at the very preliminary stage, provisional stage, had complied. And so the provisional anti-dumping duty, which had been imposed on that company, was 3.6%. And then what happened afterwards? So, you know, internet sometimes is useful. And we did realize that in China, there had been um, a meeting of the China Chamber of Commerce and Mint Matters. And in fact, this chamber had organized publicly on internet with English translation, of course, I cannot read Chinese. Uh, they had organized all the imports of aeromodigenum to the EU through the company, which had been granted market economy. While, in fact, you know that one of the conditions of being granted that status is that, of course, there is no interference whatsoever uh, from the state. And so that had been 100% organized. So I went back to the commission. We were complainant. And we said, commission, I think there is something wrong here. So this is a blatant interference of state. And in fact, there is really a circumvention of, of, the, of the status. And the commission listened to our, our, our arguments. They went back to China. They restarted completely the investigation, which was exceptional. They found out that all the questionnaires were fit. And so, and I think that remained maybe the only example in the uh, anti-dumping case law, but market economy treatment was withdrawn between provisionals and final, the final duties. And at the definitive stage, instead of having 3.6%, in fact, there was uh, uh, a countrywide uh, duty of 22.5%. And believe me, uh, the impact on the commodity between 3.6 and 22.5 makes a huge difference. Other examples, ferrosilicon originating from China. So, um, by the way, the Sunset Review was just opened uh, one month ago, so I'm again busy with that case. So, the comp there was one company being granted uh, MET, 15.6, uh, while the residual duty was 31.2, so huge differences. Silicon less obvious, 16.3 compared with 19%. I also wanted to, to share with you, in fact, the practical experience I have in, in respect to MET uh, in terms of procedure. In fact, the, the, the MET must be requested by the company. The company must fill in a questionnaire. Community producers, as complainant, of course, have the possibility to have access to the non-confidential file. So that means the non-confidential reply of these Chinese companies uh, to the questionnaire. But in practice, well, at least this is my experience. What do you what do you see? In fact, you see confidential, 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 not applicable, confidential. So it's extremely difficult to rebut because in fact what we are trying to do is that is to, to, to rebut the allegations that in fact the conditions to be granted market economic treatment are fulfilled. So in practice for us uh, industry it's extremely difficult. So if this is already the case for a company, can you imagine the difficulty uh, should market economy status be granted on a sectorial basis, because that's in WTO. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say here is that um, this is um, a concept which has a huge impact in practice for the complainant industry, but we are facing tremendous difficulties to really play the game and say we, we don't agree because, in fact, the, the, the information which is shared with us is, is very poor. And I think that's it. Thank you for your attention.